We turn to Senator Cardin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, let me just state the obvious. I think now it is uh, agreed by every member of this committee that the Tuscaball today doesn't work. Right. It's broken. It's not protecting the public. And we have a responsibility to act. I could cite the fact that there have been studies showing that 212 industrial chemicals commonly found in the human body of most Americans. These are dangerous toxins that are currently in our bodies and being, uh, being transmitted uh, to babies when they're born. So we have a responsibility to pass a framework to protect the public from these toxics. So I come to this hearing wanting to make sure that we get this job done. And I also want to acknowledge our former colleague, Frank Lautenberg. I sat next to him on this committee. He was passionate about our children and our grandchildren. He was passionate about public health issues. And this is one area that he devoted a large part of his career to correct a bill that was not working in order to help public health. Senator Vitter, I want to thank you for reaching out to Senator Lautenberg and bringing forward a bipartisan bill that sets up a framework which is certainly much preferred over the current law. And that gives us a way, I think, to move forward. So I agree with you. I think I'm optimistic that we should be able to use that framework uh, to move forward, uh, to move forward legislation that can not only pass this committee, but can pass the United States Senate and the House and be signed by President Obama. The compromise that you brought forward needs further change, and I'm very pleased to see that you've reached out uh, to Senator Udall and other members of this committee uh, to look at the legitimate concerns that have been raised in the bill that is brought forward. Madam Chair, I'm going to ask consent that a letter from the Attorney Generals of California, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, Oregon, Vermont, and Washington be made part of our record. Doug Gansler, the Attorney General from Maryland, joined this letter saying that they have deep concerns about the unduly broad preemption language in S-10009. Uh, I could cite many examples of concerns that we have. Uh, we could talk about the BPA and the plastics and, and baby bottles that have been uh, brought to national attention, and many of our states have acted to protect the public health of their citizens. That's federalism. That's how we get to know what we can do nationally by how our states act, whether it works or not, and then use that as a way to strengthen our national laws. The Attorney General of Maryland points out that uh, the uh, compromise bill could affect the health quality of Marylanders by preempting in areas where Maryland has acted on flame retardant products, on lead uh, contain, uh, on the sale of lead-containing children products. Maryland's been one of the leaders because we've had a serious problem of lead poisoning in our state. So we're acting in that area. Or children's jewelry, Maryland has acted. And I would not want to see us uh, pass legislation that would prevent our state from protecting our citizens, but also recognizing that there are going to be other challenges that come out in the future, and we want our states to be aggressive in moving forward on that. Uh, let me mention one other area that I hope that we will look at very carefully, and that deals with the standard that's used and the burden of proof. Uh, the standard, as I understand it, that's used in the bill uh, re refers to unreasonable risk, which is a standard which I think has been uh, somewhat outdated. Uh, in our Food Quality Act, we use reasonable certainty of no harm, which I think is a safer standard for us to use when it comes to public health concerns. So I would hope that we would have some discussion as to what the appropriate standard should be and who has the burden of proof. These are some issues that I hope our committee will have an opportunity to review. I hope the witnesses today will help us in sorting through how we should act. Uh, Senator Vitter, as you pointed out, it's been 37 years since we last passed uh, a, a bill that regulates uh, these chemicals. Let's make sure we get it right this time because it may be 37 years before we get back to it again. <laughs> With that, I look forward uh, to the, our witnesses in our hearing.